Hello, everybody. We have uh, Fernando Herreros here. Uh, uh, my name is Adrika Sevitskaita. I'm a helmet based ventilation.com co founder. And I'm very happy to talk with you, Fernando, because you will tell us about your mission and the uh, helmet project in your country. He's from Uruguay. So, can you tell me more about yourself? Okay, if the, before I want to just thank you, Arika, for having me and, and helping me so much in this process. My name is Fernando. As you said, I'm from Asuncion, Paraguay. This is a city in, it's a country in South America. It's in the middle of South America. We have no ocean. It was so weird, a Mediterranean country. We say that we are an island surrounded by land. So... <laughs> Uh, our, our neighbors are Argentina, Bolivia, and Brazil. And okay, since this pandemic started in Paraguay, we had like uh, uh, the, the, the government closed everything in March. And we are a company that we work designing events, like events, mass people events, like concerts and stuff. And so when this started, the first thing the government says was no more events. Mm -hmm. So we had to find a new way to, to make money, right? So um, we started to investigate what was happening outside. And we saw that there was an a isol isolation pod. It's to transport patients with COVID. Mm -hmm. So that was the first thing we did. We designed it, uh, we went to our, our factory and manufactured one and people related to health started to call us and asking us like, can you do this? Can you do that? And we met a doctor and he told us that he, he wanted to make a helmet. So we started investigating and he, th this, he's an infectologist. He, mm -hmm. and we also work with an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. And an emergenciologist. Uh, is that a word? Uh, uh, well, it would be. He's a doctor or. Yeah, he's a doctor that, that works in emergency situations. Uh, okay. that, that's his specialty. Mm -hmm. so we worked with all these people and we got this final product that is our prototype for the helmet. Okay? Yeah, and it. And it Great, you know, I saw the pictures and videos that you sent it to me with the helmet actually used uh, on your volunteers and even uh, patients. So uh, you're working with uh, a, a hospital. And yeah. um, so tell me more about your, you know, collaboration with these doctors in the hospital that treating uh, COVID patients. Okay, once we got the the prototype ready, we started calling doctors and asking them to try them. So we went to quite a few, like 10 hospitals, 10 different hospitals to try it with them and with their ventilators because every ventilator is from a different brand and, and using all the information that we found in your website, we actually showed them there were different ways to use the helmet, like with the with the wall oxygen. We used it with a high flow machine with blenders mm -hmm. and it worked perfectly every time. In Paraguay, there's practically, practically no experience with the helmet. Mm -hmm. we, we're like the pioneers in this and the doctors are very happy with this and need it for COVID right now. Right now. To protect them more than the patient because the, the the mask and the helmet kind of do the same thing mm -hmm. but it's better for the doctors so we're working for that to help our doctors paraguay is a small country we have like seven million people in paraguay and we have very few doctors so if we get to the the time where our doctors start to get to get ill it's going to be very bad for us. So we started working on this and we're hoping to help the most people we can. Yeah, so it's a, a great planning. And I, I'm happy that your country started the, uh, you know, the isolation quarantine so early. 
and right now you don't have so many cases of COVID, but we all, you're already preparing for the wars. And of course. Uh, like you mentioned, helmet is a great option uh, in case if uh, you have low resources in the hospital, like you said, if physicians uh, or nursing staff will start to get sick and we cannot perform, uh, still the patients who are with helmet um, and using like a wall gases, they will need a less uh, resources versus the ones that are intubated on a ventilator. Um, and I did mention that uh, before. Now, you did say that uh, uh, there are doctors who had experience with the helmet ventilation back in yes. Europe, in France, right? Yes, we worked with a doctor that he's the like head doctor in an ICU mm -hmm. in a private hospital here. And when we got there, he told us that he already used it in France mm -hmm. and he, he lived there like five years studying getting to be a doctor mm -hmm. and he told us that they used it there mainly with old people because of the skin of the face and using the mask really hurt them a lot but they didn't have like a lot of experience using a helmet the main thing that he talked about was the the carbon dioxide re-aspiration mm -hmm. but i've been reading a lot of studies and and found out that if the flow is high enough, like 50 liters, it, the, the re-aspiration isn't a problem. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we gave them that information and they started reading and they're very, very enthusiastic to use a helmet. We just need uh, to, to dial up a little things and we'll be ready to, to sell them. Yeah, so can you tell me a little bit more about your helmet? So I see it's one yes. piece, right? Yeah, it's one piece. It's made entirely out of PVC. Mm -hmm. It's the, the materials that we use are all SGS certified. Mm -hmm. It has an inspiratory and expiratory port. Mm -hmm. It has uh, another port to access a patient in case they need to drink water or eat, eat something liquid. Mm -hmm. Or the, suck, for example, yeah. And we have a neck seal that's silicone based. Mm -hmm. And the straps, the arm straps are made out of PVC as well. Okay. And so uh, if, yeah, tell me. These ones are also, they can be cleaned and it can be uh, multi-patient use. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. And if by any chance the, the neck seal is broken, we can change it. We can take it off and put another one on. We already tried that and mm -hmm. we made a trial with a new one. Mm -hmm. Like we, we cut it off and put it on again and it worked perfectly. That was the video with a patient that you saw actually. Now, the, uh, how the neck seal works, because uh, what I noticed uh, with uh, other manufacturers, that usually is the hardest part for the helmet, because it is, like you said, it's a silicon or some other material. Um, yeah. And um, also the size. So do you have to measure the neck and cut uh, based on the patient's neck size? Yes. And when the we we we're planning to make like three different measurements like small medium and large mm -hmm. and it is kind of flexible so you can pull it mm -hmm. you can apply force like we tell everybody that they have to fold the the, the neck seal a little bit so the the force goes on the folded part so you can stretch it as long as you want you see it stretched a lot Mm -hmm. without breaking and you can put it on the head actually we we um, tell people to put it on directly on the head without stretching it like everybody does mm -hmm. so so the seal gets on the neck easily I, I want to make a small demonstration I'm not yeah. going to hear you very well when I put it on but I'm going to put it on enough so you can see it okay, okay. so I'm going to take the straps off Mm -hmm. The thing is in Paraguay we, we have a very hot weather mm -hmm. but now we are starting 
the cold weather. So uh, the the diseases like the flu and stuff like all the respiratory diseases are going to start right now. So we have to be ready for this. Okay, I'm going to make the, the demonstration. All right. So we just put it over the head and pull it down. Hmm? All right, so I see you don't have to stretch it. Uh-huh. And it's pretty good sealed. So this is uh, this helmet is your size, right? <laughs> good. Let me get my microphone again. Mm -hmm. So when you did the testing now with the helmet, uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. sure. Can you give me a second, please? Mm -hmm. Sure. Franco. I'm sorry, my son is here. Okay. <laughs> so how was the leak? Did you notice the, a lot of leak with the helmet or none or? No leak at all. Like the silicon based material like sticks on the neck. Mm -hmm. Because you have like positive pressure inside the, the helmet. That means you have negative pressure outside the helmet. So it like sticks on the neck and you have practically no leak. We found out that the, the, the straps are very important. Yeah. Because the, the, the leak is, we have no leak when you have the straps put on like tight. Mm -hmm. because it, it like presses the neck mm -hmm. and we tried it uh we actually tried high pressures mm -hmm. we got until 20 centimeters of water and we didn't have any leak nice yeah <laughs> i was inside the helmet it was a lot of pressure in there but the helmets it still worked perfectly uh how was the noise? Uh, did, you hear, did you have a lot of noise with the high flow? Yeah. Uh, in one of the cases, w there was like a whistling noise uh -huh. through the, the, the tubing. Mm -hmm. But we just bought the, the earplugs and tried it with the earplugs and there was no problem with that. Okay. If, if we talk about inconvenience, that would be one of the things. Like you cannot hear very well inside of the helmet. Mm -hmm. So getting instructions from the doctor may be a little bit, they have to speak louder, but that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that we found negative. Because it's one piece and all made out of PVC, it has nothing rigid. The patient can, can like lie down and there's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. It actually is very comfortable. Uh, we had a doctor that told us that she was claustrophobic and she put it on and once the airflow starts, she didn't feel claustrophobic. But when she just put it on, she was like, okay, take it off. And I, mm -hmm. I told her, just try it with the air on. Uh -huh. And she tried it with the air on and she forgot she had it on. Yeah, and this is what I hear from the studies that actually claustrophobia is not a big issue with the helmet. Yeah. Uh, it's actually, people have less of it versus the ones with the face mask that is on your face. Yeah, of course, because of the straps you have behind the head, it's, yeah. and it's very tight. Something the, the nurses told us, that the nurses are the ones that, that have to struggle with this all day long in the ICUs. They told us that one of the major benefits was getting the seal right. Because when you put the helmet on, the the seal in the neck it just it just sticks to your neck on uh -huh. the other hand the face mask when they put it on they have to like find the perfect shape of the face to get the perfect seal because they have a lot of leak yeah so they, they told me like they take 30 minutes or something to get it ready and if the patient has to drink or throws up or something like that it's stopping the treatment for that long and 30 minutes to put it on again. And that's a great thing about the helmet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I'm so happy to hear it that the, the nurses are noticing the benefits of it. Uh, yeah. 
I'm a nurse myself and I know how frustrating it can be when you're trying to adjust the face mask for mm -hmm. for a long time. And then uh, again, patients fail because it's pretty hard. Like, uh, you know, the, the pressure on your skin is so so bad and it becomes so painful and on top of your respiratory distress having pain is not a good combination so that's why people usually fail the face mask and uh, so how many you made already for the physicians to try it how many helmets did you make we have we made 10 helmets and the, we gave them all to different hospitals in mm -hmm. the capital asuncion is paraguay's capital and we have a few in like outer cities okay. and they're trying it there. The thing is Paraguay is a poor country. We, we don't have a lot of resources like the US. Asuncion is kind of prepared, but the cities out of the capital, the, the healthcare is very low there. Mm -hmm. We have very few doctors. We have very few ventilators, even ICU units. We have like, few of them so we know that the helmet is going to be a very helpful there yeah yeah it just uh, again it can be a struggle with getting that uh, reliable uh, gas flow but uh, there are so many now uh, groups who are making uh, like a portable BiFAP machines so those yeah. can be also added to the helmet in those areas where you said uh, the resources are too low. Um, well, um, so you started that uh, helmet production and uh, uh, testing. When was that? It was like a month ago. A month ago. Uh, yeah, w when we started with the, the, the prototype and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think I contacted you like two, uh, two weeks or a week ago. And that was when we were starting to get the feedback from all the doctors and they're very happy with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we even tried it in an ambulance situation. They have like a small ventilator there. It's, it would be like uh, those sleep apnea mm -hmm. CPAP things, you mm -hmm. know, those, those small machines. Yeah. And we tried it out in an ambulance and like transporting, a, it was a volunteer, it wasn't a patient, a real patient. Mm -hmm but it worked perfectly. So they were very enthusiastic. Like everybody is afraid of COVID right now. So it would be a great protection for everybody. And imagine just like taking the patient with the helmet on from the ambulance to the hospital. It would be, everything is quicker. Yeah, and it's much safer. Like you said, the leaks are minimum or none. Uh, plus you put the filter on and yeah. This is what we just talked a minute uh, before the interview. You wanted to put the kits together so you have everything in there. You have a PEEP valve, a filter, a required tubing. So it's gonna be even easier for the doctors to put this on a patient. I'm also yeah. happy to hear that the physicians are um, you know, being cautious, and, but at the same time, they are learning about the helmet and reading all the research. So that's a good thing. It's uh, that learning curve is happening in every country that didn't use helmets. And I'm uh, happy that you guys still have time to learn that in, uh, in uh, you know, in uh, times where COVID is not uh, uh, high in your country yet. And uh, so we can learn, we can get used to it, we can get comfortable with it. And you did send me a video of the patient with the uh, helmet and she was an elderly woman. Uh, she yeah. didn't have a COVID, but you did see a great improvement. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Okay, that, that is the first hospital we went to. Mm -hmm. That is um, when the COVID thing started, Paraguay made a, a huge improvement in one of the hospitals. Like it, they made a huge ICU unit mm -hmm. that is prepared to receive everybody with COVID. If we have, we, right now we have just 10 people in the hospitals and a thousand cases, but only 10 people in hospitals. So we're, our health system is very, very like, it's prepared. Yes, no stress. So we took it there, <laughs> I'm sorry? 
no stress there. <laughs> no stress there yet because no. Brazil has a lot of cases and it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. There's no vaccine, so there's nothing we can do. And like you mentioned, now you have that uh, uh, flu season starting already in your in your uh, hemisphere, yeah. in your part of the country, and uh, it's it's uh, you like you said, you don't know when these numbers will change. And your big neighbor Brazil is really struggling right now with. Uh, yeah, um, that's right. And just to finish the story I was telling yeah. you about the the patient, mm -hmm. and okay, the the director, the the main doctor there. He asked me to leave, well, the, that was like the first prototype we left there. And he told me, I want to make clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And he told us that he would help us and get everything to, so we have a perfect helmet. So they tried it out with a patient. She, was, she had a, a low saturation of the oxygen. She had like 83 or 84 mm -hmm. and after 10 to 20 minutes of using a helmet, the saturation got a lot better. She got like 95 wow. in 20 minutes time. And that was how long it took to put the mask on before. So yeah. they're very happy with that. Exactly. And in the video, I could see that she finally was resting. So that's, uh, you know, when we relax, and um, what I remember from uh, Dr. Patel uh, webinar, she was mentioning too that a lot of patients, when you put the helmet on, we just relax and fall asleep. And, you know, as an ICU nurse, and uh, I know that we start to freak out. I'm like, what happened? Why is patient <laughs> <laughs> yeah. out? So, but actually that's, that's a sign that we finally can relax and take a break and because we get all this oxygen, their numbers are getting better and uh, uh, the CO2 levels are being checked also to make sure that that CO2 is not getting rebreathed. So that's the one thing with the helmet that you want them to be cautious about. Uh, like you know already and your doctors know about that the flow should be high to make sure that there is no CO2 rebreathing. Yeah, and once again, I'm telling you, I'm not from the health industry, mm -hmm. but I've been reading a lot. My father is a doctor. My father-in-law is a doctor, so I spoke a lot with them. And using what Dr. Mauricio Cereda did, mm -hmm. we use that as an instruction so we give them all the, the information. The first time that, that uh, most of the time I go there with mm -hmm. the helmet and I tell them everything we've read about and to use like the 50 liter minimum mm -hmm. and trying that and different, they, they are trying different types of, of uh, configurations mm -hmm. to see how the helmet works. The, we're receiving a lot of help from the physicians here. We're very happy about that. And they want to use a helmet. We just need to get the final certification to, to be able to, to get it out there. But we, we have everything perfect. Yeah, so this is uh, what is happening in many countries, uh, including US, mm -hmm. is the FDA in take a long time to approve this new device. So this uh, device is not new in uh, Europe, as we know, but in other countries, it's a new device and the process is pretty long and, uh, and hard to get the, those approvals. So we're gonna tr try to help you as much as possible with that approval. And I hope that you will get it soon and it can be ready. Uh, for the for the use uh, for patients, not just COVID patients, like you said, now you have a flu season coming, uh, mm -hmm. all the cold, all the respiratory um, diseases will be on a rise in your country. Um, also, quick question, how is the production? Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, you can uh, scale up the production if needed? Uh, like how many units you can make per week or day if it's... Yeah, we're, we're making uh, small calculations and with the people that we have in the... and everything that we need to make it like it's done, we can make like a hundred a week. Hundreds a week, okay. Yeah. 
that's pretty good. And then if you can uh, get uh, uh, help from a government, probably you can yeah. increase that production. Of course, of course. If we get more people and there's this machine that makes the, it's like a PVC welding, uh -huh. with a high frequency welding, you can see it there. Mm -hmm. So it's all, there's no, there's no stitching here. It's all welded. Yeah. all welded together everything is hermetic and that machine we have only three in the factory so and we have other stuff we have to do right yeah so so but but we can upscale that of course if we had a lot of of inquiries we, we would make it yeah and definitely you can help your neighbors so um brazil like you mentioned uh, Argentina, I know the team in Argentina, they are making some helmets too. Uh, I, I've been speaking with people in Argentina. Okay. Just they were helping me with the certification thing. Mm -hmm. And their government also is having problems with the certification because they, they don't have like all the information to know if the helmet works correctly and all that stuff. The same thing you're struggling about. Argentina used to have it, like certification there, but now they don't have it. A few years ago, they, they stopped getting it. They, there's very little experience with the helmet in South America, practically none. Yeah, it's, it's again, you know, uh, Italy is so good in the helmet use because at that time when the face mask uh, was introduced and helmet, you know, in Italy, we had more helmet champions. <laughs> so that's why we, you know, we know that uh, uh, system so well. And here, like in the US also, we are more comfortable with the face masks. And now to bring that new, um, well, new old new <laughs> equipment yeah. is really hard, but I hope we're gonna get over this and uh, it's good that you guys are ready for the wars and uh, you know other countries didn't have didn't have that chance to to prepare there, like there's a very nice experience that we had here there was this pediatric icu that called us mm -hmm. and told us that they wanted the, the helmet for kids mm -hmm. because they they told me like they just tell the kids that they're putting an astronaut helmet on and it's so much easier for them because kids move a lot when they put the mask on and they cry and it gets soft and yeah. they 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 finish like intubating kids mm -hmm. because they have no other way of getting a therapy and they didn't need intubation with a helmet we can help the, these icu doctors get the kids uh less invasive uh, treatment yeah and and i i know about it too i talked with the doctor here in us he's a pediatrician so he mentioned the same issues that the pediatric population has with the face mask it's very hard to keep it on also their skin is all more fragile mm -hmm. than you know adults and it gets more skin breakdown the same like you mentioned, you know, older people, they have uh, uh, skin breakdowns also with the face masks. So hopefully that can be used for the children. And uh, did you think about making smaller helmets for the yeah. kids? Yeah, we're, we're actually making one right now for the pediatric doctor. He asked us one. We're just um, finishing some, he's giving us some information about the volume and to make it like, suitable for babies to toddlers and from toddlers to like teenagers and stuff like that so we are going to make two different models like the adult model that's this one uh, a small kid model and a toddler model that goes on babies and toddlers so Perfect. i think that's going to be the first thing we're going to sell because they really need it there because they struggle a lot and they don't want to intubate the kids because it has a, a long life. The, the, the throat gets hurt and they, it's never the same. Yeah, exactly. It's just developing there, right? Yeah, and it's so sad when you see those little kids, you know, yeah. being on a ventilator. Yeah, I have a, 
I have a child myself, she's a three year old, and I can imagine if something happens, you know, I want to have a helmet, so send me one. <laughs> yeah, I've got that. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> I will, I will. I promise you I will. I, I'm going to send you one in every size so you can try it down there. I don't know how long it's going to take to get there. Yeah. Our borders are closed, so there's, it's kind of tough. Yeah, I, I will wait for your helmet. Uh, I want to see it myself. I want to try it. And then uh, we will stay in touch. And uh, I will keep everybody updated about your success. And uh, I hope you will get that approved by your government very soon. And uh, also, I hope you can help your neighbor countries. Uh, this is very important. Um, well, thank you so much. Do you have anything else to add to this interview or to wish uh, to other manufacturers in the, in the world what we can I just do? want you to know that you are a very big part of our, of our helmet. We got a lot of information from your website and watching the videos and reading the studies. So you are part owner of this helmet. Thank you. This is really, uh, really nice to hear and uh, I'm doing my best and I, I will share all these interviews and uh, all the newest information about the helmet based ventilation on the website. So if somebody didn't subscribe to it, please do uh, yeah. because you will get the updates in your email that there is a new content available. And uh, as um, I mentioned before, we had a uh, at the beginning of our helmet based ventilation project, we thought about uh, you know u s first, but now it is becoming a global um, project, and I want to make sure that i you know I help everybody else here and I share what I have with you guys to make that helmet available in your country. Thank you very much. Thank you so I'm willing to give you all my information about the designs of the helmet and everything if it's going to help another country. We know it's, it's a, huge, a huge thing to get help from people that don't even know you. And it's great. It's great to know that there's people willing to help you and not expecting to get paid. Yeah. We just want to help. We know it's going to help a lot of people, especially the doctors and the nurses and everybody that works in healthcare, they're scared to go to work. So we think that we, if we put a helmet on the patient, it's gonna be a little bit less scarier and the therapy is gonna work on the patient. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that, that we always repeat. It's not better or worse than a mask. It mm -hmm. does the same effect. It was like the, the therapy is that we want oxygen to get into the lungs of the patient and open the, the, the lungs. And it does that, as does a mask. But this prevents a doctor from getting sick. It's much more comfortable for the patient. And you know, that's it. Yeah, it's, uh, those are very important you know, benefits of that uh, system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope more people will be willing to learn about the helmet-based ventilation and start to use it now. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you guys, you had nothing to do with health, uh, you know, system <laughs> or the medical equipment. And look at you, you adjusted to the, uh, to the current situation so quickly and your team was able to develop a really good helmet, a great device, and it passed all the testing. So that's a... You know, kudos to you guys. I'm, I'm very happy. And uh, this is one of the great examples that anyone, uh, that people even who don't know uh, about the, you know, medical part, if we bring a good team together, you can make that happen. So thank you so much. Th thank you. It's very important to get the information from medical people. We just didn't make it alone. It wasn't, we had a lot of help from lots of doctors and nurses and people that work with uh, ambulances and they gave us all the information that we needed to make this. We, we couldn't have done it alone. 
Yeah, this is what you need for the success. Always listen to your customer, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. We're gonna finish this interview. Good luck to you and everybody else uh, who's making uh, helmets in your country. And uh, I hope to talk with you next. Thank you. Thank you very much.